Want to shop Walmart Black Friday deals first? Walmart Plus members get early access to our hottest deals. Join now and get 50% off a one-year annual membership. Shop Black Friday deals first with Walmart Plus. See terms at walmartplus.com. The new Apple Watch Series 10 is here. It has the biggest display ever. It's also the thinnest Apple Watch ever, making it even more comfortable on your wrist. And it's the fastest charging Apple Watch, getting you eight hours of charge in just 15 minutes. Introducing the all-new Apple Watch Series 10, now available for the first time in glossy jet black aluminum. Compared to previous generation, iPhone XS or later required. Charge time and actual results will vary. Hi babes and welcome to a brand new episode of The Final Frontier. Now this week we have got a queer icon. One of my friends, absolutely obsessed. They are a comedian, they're hilarious and they are the host of their own podcast, A Gay and a Non-Gay. It's James Barr. <laughs> How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Welcome to my home. I know, it's lovely. It's just a white void. It's literally just a, a white room. <laughs> like like voters in America, it's just yes. a white void. I've been locked up. Yeah, sorry. I'll, like Hillary. I'll <laughs> lock her up. No, not, <laughs> sorry, what? not that. Um, thank you for joining me on The Final Runs here. Yes, thank you for having me. Now, I've been on your podcast. You have been on my podcast. Has that episode come out yet? As that of the episode release? has come out. Has it? Yeah, it's literally just come out. Today? It was out... Last week. It was out last week. It was out last week. So we've just done a little like like a French exchange. We, <laughs> but, we have, but, uh, but without our parents. Yeah. And French people. Yeah, just a podcast exchange. I can be French if you want. Can you speak French? I can speak, um, I can get someone to fuck me in French. Please go um, ahead. <laughs> bonsoir, uh, un coulé? <laughs> I think that's it. Okay. Bonsoir, un coulé? I think that just means fuck me. I really thought you were going to go with a classic voulez-vous coucher avec no, moi. No, actually, that would have been probably more polite. Um, it is quite it's formal. It's just like language. if you're ever in, you know, a Parisian dark room, mm -hmm. you can just whisper in a man's ear, un coulé, okay. and then that would mean, fuck me. We really went from naught to 60. We did, en français as well. En français. Soixante. So I'm hoping that that level of French gets me the opportunity to host the Eurovision Song Contest if it ever comes back to the UK. Now, I feel like we can start with that because I feel like that is a mutual dream that we share. Yes. A big Eurovision fan? Enormous. What Do you have like a favourite Eurovision artist of all time? I do, and it's Hera Bjork. <gasps> that is very je specific. Je and, oh my gosh, and she sings French. Yeah, je ne sais quoi. Iceland. <laughs> I can't remember what year. I'm far too dyslexic for that. But She yeah. came back though. I mean, she did. She came back this year. Did not qualify. Did not qualify, which is really sad. But still, I, I, she was wearing a questionable pantsuit, as I recall. Mm. You know, I actually met her this year because I hosted um, a Eurovision party in Copenhagen. Nice. Opposite Malmo. And Hera Bjork performed. And I think she was a little overwhelmed with how starstruck I genuinely was in her face. Um, but she's amazing. I feel like... It's quite a specific song, Je ne sais quoi, but anyone who has heard DJ Demon at the Two Brewers, <laughs> that song gets dropped out of nowhere. And it's iconic. I think more people know that song than, than you would than you would think. Really? Kind of the love. Quoi, I know you have a special something. It is. It is maybe I'll cover that at that, some point. Oh, please do. That would be great. I mean, you know I'm a fan of your music, so I would love you yeah. to drop a cover of that. I think I would. I See, I'm a massive Eurovision fan, but I would not have gone for... I wouldn't have pegged you... Pegged. I wouldn't have had you down as a Hera Bjork Where kind of gal. Where would you put me? Oh, I don't want to make it sound like no, I had it. basic okay. assumptions, Go but on. I thought I was getting a Lorene. Okay. Oh, a Lorene. Classic. I thought you were going to pick Scooch for me. Oh, I kind of see that as well. Yeah. Scooch Lorene iconic. too, though. I mean, Lorene is great, but no. Lorene can't be your favourite. She's everybody's favourite. I think it's. A, I think we just have to make the basic assumption that everyone's like top pick is Loreen. Do you think so? I think it has to be. I think making assumptions about people is really dangerous, actually. Too. I think we should be a bit more open-minded. And I say, my show, my rule. <laughs> um, but I think you can you can split people into two Loreen camps. Yeah. Because there are the classic Euphoria. Right. And then there are the people who are edgy and are like, tattoos my preferred. Well, but actually, there's also people then like me who would say, my heart is refusing me. Is a favorite Lorene song. 
Wait. which isn't a Eurovision song, but is an amazing song. You know, she applied four times. She went yeah. through Melody Festival. And... I mean, she's incredible. The fact that she just believed in herself so kept much. going. It's very inspiring. Yeah, and she was a former contestant on The X Factor Sweden. I didn't know that. Go That's back and watch her original audition. Wow. Very different human woman. Yes. Very different. Like, you can see her natural hair texture is there because she is a biracial diva. Yeah. Like, different different look to her. Oh, she's so great. She's definitely been <laughs> plumped and, and filled here and right, there. Right, exactly. Who yeah. hasn't? Um, but who is your favourite if it wasn't Lorene? Who is my favourite bar Lorene? Oh, that is a tough one. I've got... Right, I have got a very very specific soft spot for Brooke Scullion who entered for Ireland with the song That's Rich and it didn't qualify. I don't think I remember that. About two years ago. Is that in the same league as Marry me, I'll be a queen bee? That <laughs> sort of... It's definitely less camp. She was definitely giving it like Irish, like a pocket-sized Irish Dua Lipa mm. moment in like a very sort of co outfit. But the reason why I've got a soft spot for her is because I'm sure she will mind me telling the story. One time, she performed at the Two Brewers. I was there. We got very drunk together, ended up at the house across the alley, performing the choreography to her own song together. Right. Um, with Rylan in the background, counting us in. Excellent. And I, I will not release that footage. I will just keep it for me as a lovely memory. I would like to see that. I will show you. Okay, fabulous. Why won't you release it? I just think that... It's not my place to <laughs> to show everyone in that video in, in that specific way. Got line. it, got it. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. I hear you now. I made it sound more suspicious than it is. What I mean was um, Brooke was very drunk and ends up doing floor work. Of course. <laughs> no, just... That's what I was thinking. Vocals probably not on point. No, well, I mean, her vocals are always on point, but um, it was more of a lip sync for your life moment. Mm. And I lost that lip sync. <laughs> and I'm not at peace with that at all. <laughs> Speaking of the two brewers, I <laughs> literally feel like I always bump into you there. That's true. That is true. I only see you in the two brewers. You you do quite a lot of comedy shows in, yes. in the back the back, in the back bar. room, obviously mm. in the back room. Um, yeah, I have I've performed comedy at the two brewers a lot. It's such a good venue. It is great. I love it, and the men are hot as well. I always find well, there's no yeah no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Really? No, speak, speak on a, it, no, There's a certain type of man. Is that, what, yeah. is that where you're at? Yeah, the pure gym energy is it's strong there. <laughs> pure gym. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It's not Barry's, is it? It's no, pure, it's pure no, gym. No Barry's boot camp. Just, <laughs> just pure gym energy. Pure gym energy. Not sponsored. No, absolutely. <laughs> Hashtag not spons. Um, yeah, but they're sort of like, they're kind of rough and ready, and I, I like that. They, it's always a, it feels like a rugby team night out. You know they do have a rugby yeah, event there. They do, and they've got a football team event. Do you ever go to the the ball once I a have, month on I a Friday? The ball once a month on a Friday, a couple of times. Really, that was fun. Yeah, organized by Ollie James Parr, also known as Delicious Lee Extra. Shout out, who mm. by the way, one of my favorite things about him is that he had. <laughs> Sorry to anyone that doesn't know him. But the story is worth it. He, um, at the Attitude Awards two years ago, he got a boot thrown at his head by Becky Hill as she kicked her shoe off. <laughs> Sorry. How excellent is that? <laughs> that was a cackle. Sorry. That is very Ollie. Do you know, this is, the Final Frontier is very much a safe space where we talk about things that no one listening or watching really understands. Brilliant. But I will put a picture of Ollie on screen now. Um, <laughs> Ollie at the Attitude Awards is constantly iconic. So I think it was the same year, two years ago, Natalie Cassidy was there and Ollie is obsessed with Natalie Cassidy. So I met Nat Cass, um, spoke to her and then bumped into Ollie and I was like, Ollie, your dreams are coming true. Natalie Cassidy is here. And then for a good hour and a half, I just saw this blur of someone drunk, stumbling around, pushing around people, trying to find Natalie Cassidy, who at that point had already left. Oh. But Ollie just, like, four bottles of wine down was trying to find Natalie Cassidy, who was no longer present oh, in the room. so sad that she'd left. Yeah. We need to make that happen. I just, I need Natalie Cassidy on this podcast. She's yeah. an icon and I'm obsessed I with mean, her. I mean, she's, honestly, I've been trying to get her on my podcast as well, gay and non-gay. And, um, yeah, I think it will happen at some point. I'm sure she's up for it. She's well, just very busy, isn't she? She is. You record, like, round the corner. Maybe we can double her up. Yes. Just get Nat, Nat Cass out for a day. That is a great idea. Oh, we my goodness. share the Uber fees. Yeah. We'll pay for the Ubers. Yeah. Together. Poppy, can you just make a note? We're Poppy, getting Natalie Cassidy. End dog. End dog. 
I thought you said end dumps for a second. And I was like, let's speak <laughs> about end dumps. I think I nearly did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually a big end dumps fan. Are you excited really? for Talisa in I'm a Celebrity? Is Talisa in I'm a Celebrity? Talisa's going into I'm a Celebrity. Wait, have they announced who's no, going into the jungle? This is rumours. Oh. They're rumoured to be sending Talisa into the jungle. See, the thing about life is that it's... I love Talisa. Same. Fagash breath. Let's go. Love I'm so her. excited for this. Do you know, I once, Talisa was once performing directly in front of my face and me at my big age was acting like I was about 14 years old. I was like singing my tits off. And she suddenly was like, sir, sir. I was like, she can't be talking about me, sir. I wasn't in drag. Um, but still, the word sir, I was like, yeah. that's not me. Um, sir, come I forward. That. I hate it when people call me a man. Same, but it was Talisa. So I was like, I'm a big bloke, thank you. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> call me what you want, Talisa. She called me to the front, put the microphone in front of me, and I was like, I'm ready to give it vocals. And my voice cracked. No. Cracked so what badly. What was it? I was singing up the octave. I thought, I can hit it in to Lisa's register. And I gave it, you're making a fool out of me. It was horrific. So Truly. Oh, no. And, yeah, it was very embarrassing because, like, Big long-term N-dubs fan. Once me and my friend Rosie uh, went on a night out for Halloween dressed as Talisa and Dappy. That was our Halloween costume. And you were Talisa? No, I was Dappy. Oh my God, you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, I was. Did you have the dick pics to go with it? Well, if you ask nicely, maybe later, dear. <laughs> Thanks. Are you an iconic N-dubs fan? That's um, a weird I'm more of a Talisa fan. I mean, I love N-dubs music, but I didn't get into the fandom. I think they're a bit too like old. I'm obviously a bit younger than you, so I don't really remember... At uh, the end of days. <laughs> Go- Google it. Google it. <laughs> you can confirm that yourselves one way or another. Um, no, it was, um, I was more into Talisa. I loved Young. I was, I loved Young. Because uh, you are younger than me. So. Exa- exactly. Yep. How old are you again now? Uh, old enough to know better. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> um, young enough to not. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Come. Great. Wait, she did do... She had, like, a, a solo career. For some reason... You don't know her solo career? No, I do, but for some reason, I... In my mind, this is probably really offensive to... I don't know who. But for some reason, Talisa's solo career and Jess Wright's solo career blend together in my mind. Who's Jeff Wright? Jess Wright Who's from Jeff- Towie. <laughs> Jeff Wright. No, different. Who Je- is Jeff? Jessica Wright Who's from... Jessica Wright from She was Tower? in The Only Way is Essex. Which one was she? The sister of Mark Wright. Oh my God, Mark Wright's sister. Yeah. Okay. Who I actually went to school with. And she had a solo career. She did. No, she she didn't have hits, did she? She had one. I think the reason is they both had, I think it is Young and then Jess Wright's solo single video. I think they're both in bed with bed sheets in slow motion. Very like Ibiza vibes. Young does have that. Yeah, they are. Yeah, so I get them confused. They're on holiday. They've like trashed the room. Yeah. She's like, forgive me for what I've done because I'm young. Yeah. I mean, she's had some iconic moments. I think my, my favourite Talisa fact is the fact that that Will I Am and Britney song was hers. And Will, oh my God. Will I Am just took it. What the fuck, Will I Am? That's, That's mad, isn't so it? so bad, isn't it? She took it she took into court, right? Yeah, I think she won. Yeah. I'm sure she's bankrolled from that now. Oh, for sure. I would hope so. But that is terrible that Will I Am did that, that he just gave the song to Britney. But... She wasn't even involved. Will I am like overheard her in a studio and was like, I'll have that. And she went, No. And then he was like, please. And she was like, No. Then she was like, he just took it and gave it to Britney. Which I'm pretty sure this is actually like Wikipedia level fact. But yeah. I'm pretty sure Talisa is the reason why Britney had that phase of doing a British accent, because Britney copied Talisa's vocal. You're kidding. Yeah. So you think she just was listening to the, the guide vocal? Sorry, no disrespect to Talisa. The actual vocal. Yeah, too. And then decided to copy it. Yeah. That could be it. Because Talisa does but, it in exactly that way. Okay, but here's here's my pitch. If if Britney hadn't stolen that song from Talisa, we wouldn't have work, bitch. You want a hot buddy? That Don't is so true. Gavna. So in a way, <laughs> did we not need that to happen to pave the way for work, bitch? I think we really did. Like, it is bizarre now you break I'm it sorry, down. sorry, Talisa, but... I just think you've got to look at things like this. I think if it weren't for these moments, if we didn't get that Britney era, yeah. we wouldn't have Talisa going into the jungle. Absolutely. I think if she'll everything win. Everything plays its part. Do you think Talisa's going to win? I think she's got the chop. I mean, Colleen Rooney's in there too. Not going to win. <laughs> not get, not, I don't know. It's, I it, mean, it was Rebecca Vardy's account. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, they should have got Rebecca Vardy. 
Maybe they have. Maybe she's a late entry. Oh my god. Maybe they finally found the phone that was th- thrown in the North Ocean. Wait, the North Sea. Maybe. The North Ocean. The North. What's the difference between <laughs> they're all, ocean they're all and the oceans, sea? right? I don't know. I actually think that could be so iconic if they had um, Colleen Rooney in there and then Rebecca Vardy was the late entry. That would be really good. But I the, just can't see it happening for legal reasons, but it would be great. Do you think they've got restraining orders out against Maybe. each other? Where were you when that, that email dropped? The, the the tweet. Yeah, when where were you when that dropped? I honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. I know I should be like next level hun type person, but I do not recall. You don't remember? <laughs> no. I feel like this was our, this was one of those moments where you know who you are. You know, This is like when Trump got in in 2016. You remember where you were. <laughs> yeah, because that was definitely what that you That was not remember. my first reference. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but you remember, <laughs> how did you see through my brain? I, um, <laughs> you remember where you were and I was on a train going from Manchester Manchester to London, and I was struggling to get a signal. Yep. And it just it had all happened, and I was like, "God, why is no one on this? Why is this not being announced on the on the like tannoy?" I think it's quite specifically like gay hun culture. Do you think it is one of those just things? Yeah, I don't think like straight men care about. You really don't? No, oh, straight men, they should care. They should care about a lot of things more than they do. They really, yeah, they but should. Alas, I actually really don't remember it. I remember making jokes about it, mm. like texting friends, being like, "Haha, it was Rebecca Vardy's account." Like. But the way that it was structured mm. was next level genius. It Maybe was. she could be crowned queen of the jungle. She's a strategist. That's true. Where did she tweet it? Where? Rooney, Colleen. When? Yeah. What do you mean? When, when did this happen? Oh my God. Um, I don't know. I was on that train. So let me have a think. <laughs> I, was, I was on a train in 20... I feel like it must be like a 2014. No, it was later than that. It was 2019. No. I think it was 2019, 2020. Baby J, can you confirm when... It was definitely then. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely pre-pandemic. 2022? It was 2022. No, it wasn't. It was but post-pandemic. It can't have been. 2019. Was... That's good knowledge that you yeah. just cracked that out. Thank you. I rem- As I said, I remember exactly where I was. On a train? On a train. And you were only on a train in 2019? No, I've been on trains a lot. I'm really normal. I get trains. That was such a like humble brag. No, I've actually no. I always get trains. I'm a big train. Standard class. Attention, timeshare owners. This is an urgent consumer alert from the Timeshare Exit Hotline, a national company specializing in helping consumers legally get out of their expensive timeshare contracts. We're offering you a way to legally get rid of your timeshare. So if you're fed up with the maintenance fees that keep on coming and want to learn if you can terminate your timeshare legally and permanently, call today. Even if you've tried before and were unsuccessful in getting rid of your timeshare, call today and see if we can help. We offer a complete 100% unconditional client satisfaction guarantee. Make this completely free call and learn how we can help you legally put an end to your timeshare nightmare once and for all. You have nothing to lose, so call right now to qualify and receive a free consultation. 800-951-6756. 800-951-6756. That's 800-951-6756. Paid for by Airtime Media. You know, the average hospital visit can cost you around $12,000. So do you have that kind of extra money lying around if you get sick? Uh, Me either. That's why health insurance is so important. Today, you can get health insurance plans for a couple of dollars a day and have health, vision, and dental insurance for you or your whole family. If you're moving or changed or lost your job, we have health insurance options perfect for you. What if you need health insurance for only a few months? We have short-term insurance options ready for you right now with fast approvals and cheap rates. Whatever kind of health insurance you need, we have it. One quick phone call and we'll find you the best health insurance options for you and your family for free. Call this number, 800-352-7084, 800-352-7084, 800-352-7084. For your free health insurance quote, call 800-352-7084. Paid for by healthinsurance100.com. Want to shop Walmart Black Friday deals first? Walmart Plus members get early access to our hottest deals. Join now and get 50% off a one-year annual membership. Shop Black Friday deals first with Walmart Plus. See terms at walmartplus.com. 
sorry to bring it back to the topic of the podcast. Yeah. But we are meant to talk about like fandoms mm. and things that we particularly love. And we yeah. covered Eurovision. We did. And I feel like we've covered Talisa. Yeah. Which are clearly your two biggest fandoms that you enjoy. <laughs> Eurovision at Talisa. Talisa. Talisa for Eurovision. Start the campaign right now. Let's go. Actually, she could do it. You could do a Talisa impression as Tia Lisa. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah. No, I could. <laughs> I could. I love a snatched black ponytail. No, I mean, I know you haven't got the vocals for it, but... As insert the clip here. <laughs> no, we, <laughs> we definitely don't have the vocals to But I could see note. that. I think that would be really good. But I'm more of a dappy. Yeah. No, no, no. You could be Phaser. Cause I think can he, I be Phaser? I think he produced a lot of their stuff. Can I be called I'm not going through a Phaser? Yes, it's you can. not a Phaser. And then we can support the popular trans charity, Not A Phase, Absolutely. with our N-dubs tribute band. <laughs> Why has this all come together I in like know. a perfect... I don't know. Sorry, I'm just distracting you. You were on job. You were like, we're talking about fandoms. We're doing Eurovision. We're doing Talisa. <laughs> we are. And then we got trapped in another Talisa hole. Do you know... Chapter not, let's, let's not go back to that part of Talisa's <laughs> life. Um, I feel like this episode of the podcast is really being carried by the fact that we are b- both being driven exclusively by caffeine at this yes. moment in time. <laughs> so I'm very much enjoying it. And sorry for the stream of consciousness <laughs> situation. A but full ADHD attack, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, it's, it's like all over the place. The biggest neurodivergent sleigh that I've ever experienced, <laughs> and I'm at peace with it. Me too. Eurovision, Talisa. Yes. I'm a celeb. Great. So let's bring it back to like general fandoms. I want to know what you watch. Like what's on repeat on your Netflix? Mm, on ne- Actually, at the minute, I'm really watching The, the Real Housewives of New York. Um, seasons one, two, three, four. I'm in season four right now. I'd never watched it and everyone kept telling me I had to. So I decided this summer it was time. So whilst I was being ginger and hiding from the sun, <laughs> I watched The Real Housewives of New York and I am obsessed Nice. Well, is that in preparation of the fact they're doing a Real Housewives of London? Yes, and I really want to get cast. I don't need to be a main part, obviously. I don't see myself as main character energy in Housewives. Mm-hmm. What with the fact that I'm not a housewife <laughs> or a wife or a woman. So, <laughs> But they often have a gay, yeah. like a bitchy gay best friend or a stylist or someone that just like rocks up and is really inappropriate and annoying. And I just think that's my dream role. Do you know, I can actually... Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an annoying person. So I think I'd be great at I, being annoying. I'm concerned because as soon as you described it, I could think of about three people who I know would be like gagging to get that booking and will already be DMing yeah. Andy Bravo. Right, you're right. That. I should DM Andy Bravo. I didn't even think about that. Uh, Miss Miss Andrew Cohen. Is that his name? Andy Cohen? Who knows? But, you know, he, it is Andy Cohen. <laughs> yeah, he presents all the reunions. I know. And he is also like the CEO of Bravo as yes. a channel. I think it's not Bravo that's making it. I think it might be the local franchise. Is it Team You? It's not Hey You. Team hey, you. it's Team not You. you. <laughs> is it AliExpress? No, it's Hey You. <laughs> it's Hey You. They're making it. So I don't right. know if Andy's going to be like execing it or something, but I think it would be, it would be great. Like in the New York one... Jill Zarin has like this really annoying gay best friend who turns Jill. up to a party and it's just like inappropriately leching over all of the straight men. That's me. That is you. That is me. That's you. That's me. I believe it. Thank you. And if I can't do that, I'll just DJ in the background or I'll be, I'll just do comedy. I'll even, I'll just do like a really bad joke or something and they'll be like, oh my God, we went to James's night. It was so bad. I don't mind. I don't care. I will and it'll be filmed in the two brewers. I will take the hit. We'll film it in the two brewers. Yeah. Yes. They've done that before with like, I think the Real Housewives of Cheshire filmed in the back room of the two Did brewers. Did they really? Yeah. And drag queen Tanya Hyde was performing. Sure. The thing is, we are going to know someone that's going to be on this show. Yeah, for sure. There's no way they can make the show without us like knowing someone. It's some sort Even of if it's Gareth from Hunsnet, do you know what I mean? Like, there's going to be something. Someone will be in it. He, yeah, he'll be we, gunning. We for are that. only going to be like a couple of degrees of separation away from it. Yeah, we need to get the legendary Simon Jones PR on it, working out what's going to happen. Yes, Simon, but, please. Do you know, like, fun fact about like that genre of reality show? Before the drag, before the drag race, I actually used to be an occasional extra in Made in Chelsea. Did you? Yeah. What did you do? Uh, I, no, like non-speaking. I just have to... There was one episode where they were at that bar where you play ping pong. Right, pong. That's what it's called, yeah. And I was just in the background having a pretend conversation with a girl called Lucy. Because no. you're not allowed to speak. Wait, you didn't speak at all? No, you just have to go... 
like pretend you're having a chat. And then also there was like, I distinctly remember kind of great Gatsby energy was, party. Wait, you were lip syncing? For my life. Way back then? Yeah. Wow. And I still can't do it now. Um, there was a great Gatsby party and there's no music. <laughs> and there, is a, there was a live band on stage. So it was just these people with like trumpets doing this and us going do, 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 like silently in a room while like, I can't remember, then while Jamie Lang walks in and is like, no, but like the thing is, babe, you need to, like, it was wild. That is insane. So mm. there's no music playing. No. There's no conversation. No. And Jamie Lang is just talking about his biscuit empire. That, I bring that up quite a lot, that he's a secret McVitty. Right. Yeah, he is. That's a gag. People don't know that. No. That's, yeah, he's literally the UK Nepo baby. The most iconic Nepo baby. There's quite a lot of them. Well, I think it's cooler to be a Nepo baby from a biscuit empire than it is to be, say, Brooklyn Beckham. Yeah, but I also think, I think the biscuit empire to the candy kittens empire is like an obvious like feeding ground. Yes. But I think it's wild when people are like Sabrina Carpenter, Nepo baby, why? Because her auntie's the voice of Bart Simpson. Like, Ooh. little bit of a yeah, separation. That's, like, she didn't walk into a room with music execs and say, no. oh, my auntie is Bart Simpson's... <laughs> Wait, is it Bart Simpson? It's Nancy Cartwright, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay, auntie. yeah. yeah. No, so I guess not. But it is one of those By things way, where... Love Sabrina Carpenter. Love Nancy Cartwright. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> love Sabrina. Are you a big Sabrina Carpenter fan? Yeah, are you not? I am... Um, uh, not specifically. See, I think it's because I identify as Gen Z. Mm. That's what it is. Um, I, I identify as a boomer. So <laughs> I'm at peace with that. You've got the boomer cash now. So that, that makes sense. <laughs> I've, got, I've got the boomer energy levels. Mm. That's for sure. <laughs> Carried by caffeine. Um, I must confess at this point, producer Poppy is lurking in the background. Yeah, why is that? Uh, that is the secret signal to tell me that we have come to the end of today's episode. Oh my God, I'm so sad. However, before you go, we have a tradition on this podcast yes. that we always perform a scene together yeah. we don't know what that scene is we okay. don't know what it's from but producer poppy and baby jay will have selected something i i like to make them characters in the podcast do i need to act you do need oh my to goodness, act this is my housewives audition it i mean is it from the real housewives that's the question producer poppy what are we doing today Okay, producer Thank Poppy you. and Baby J have selected an episode of Doctor Who that you briefly mentioned for two seconds before yes. we recorded this well, podcast. Well, we were talking about Lady Cassandra. <laughs> we were, it wasn't even this episode No, it that wasn't you were this episode. About. So Lady Cassandra is the last human yeah. in the most amazing episode of Doctor Who, for me anyway. Iconic. And she's just this face that's been stretched across, I don't know what, like a... Like a... Uh, bitchy trampoline that's what like she a, looks like yeah she's a bitchy trampoline yeah. and um, it's just literally lips and eyes and she has to get sprayed with water she's had so much work done basically yeah. and she's just been alive forever I mean that isn't that's an icon isn't it it is she's a gay icon it's how I feel about Rue <laughs> just been alive forever <laughs> oh my god you're right yeah. maybe that was Rue <laughs> It could, well, voiced by Zoe Wanamaker, iconically. Yeah, and and technically, she had, Lady Cassandra has someone else doing her makeup for her, so, like, with the little water bottle. That is true. So maybe, I think it really is, actually. Raven is the spray bottle. Raven is the spray bottle. Um, so, we have been given this scene from okay. uh, the Doctor Who episode, The, the Idiot's, Idiot's Lantern. Lantern. What we, do we know about this episode? We know that... Um, I can't remember the name of the actress, but she's very famous. Did producer Poppy trying to jump in tell, <laughs> telling me about the episode as if I don't know everything about Doctor Who? I know what episode... Have they never listened oh God, to they, this situation? They're like literally mansplaining right now? I know, it's actually <laughs> quite offensive. So it's about this like um, alien entity who takes over like through television and like zaps people into it so they like lose their face. Is, oh, and she just shouts hungry and she is played by someone whose first name is Miriam I think Margulies? no I can't find the actress's name but she's very famous very British very iconic great great episode yeah like roses in like quite can I say yeah like 1950s it's like post-war mm. vibes that sounds cutesy uh, so are you magpie or am I rose you said, are you magpie or am I Rose? So, I'm Rose. so I think you have decided. <laughs> <laughs>
that you will be Rose and I will be Magpie. I'm so annoying. Heads, you win. Okay. Tails, Great. I lose. So I'm Rose and you're Magpie. I actually... Or would you rather be Rose? No, I'm, I'm, I'm like very much not in the headspace. You're like, like, we just, I just want to get this over with, James. I don't need to do this. You've been okay. up since 5 a.m. Okay. I'm more conscious about you going to bed. I have been up since 5 a.m. Okay, all right. And scene. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I'm afraid you're too late. I was just about to lock the door. Yeah? Well, I want to buy a telly. Come back tomorrow, please. You'll be closed, won't you? What? For the big day. The coronation. Yes, yes, of course, the big day. I'm sure you'll find somewhere to watch it. Please go. Seems to me half of London's got a television since you're practically giving them away. I have my reasons. And what are they? Uh, Poppy, there's a line for you in the background. (laughs) The wire shouts, hungry. 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 Okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Wow. (laughs) It's more Uh, more of a hungry. Hungry, hungry. What's that? It's just a television. One of these modern programs. Now, I really do think you should leave right now. Not until you've answered my questions. How comes your televisions are so cheap? It's my patriotic duty. Seems only right that as many folk as possible get to watch the coronation. We might be losing the empire. As a Nigerian, I don't like this. No. We, <laughs> we might be losing the empire, but we can still be proud. Oh, God. 20 million. <laughs> this is very Trump coded. 20 million <laughs> people they reckon will be watching. You imagine that? And 20 million people can't be wrong, eh? So why don't you get yourself back home and get up bright and early for the big day? Nah, I'm not leaving till I've seen everything. I need to close. Mr. Magpie. I thought you were a woman for some reason. I was giving it that other day. I'm so sorry I've misgendered you. <laughs> Mr. Magpie, something's happening out there. Ordinary people are being struck down and changed. And the only new thing in the house is the television. Your television. What's going on? I knew this would happen. I knew I'd be found out. He locks the shop door. That's not the noise of a key. Fine. All right, then, it's just you and me. You're going to come clean, then. What's really in it for you? For me? Perhaps some peace. From what? From her! That's just a woman on the telly. That's just a programme. Poppy, if, if you could just shout, what a pretty little girl. What a pretty little girl. Oh, my God. Are you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you, little one. Unseasonably chilly for this time of year, don't you think? What are you? I'm the wire and I'm hungry. (laughs) (laughs) That's how it was intended to be played, for sure. Energy lances out and grabs my face. This is an effect. We'll do it in post, yep. Magpie, help me! Just think of that audience tomorrow, my dear. All settling down to watch the coronation. 20 million people. Things will never be the same again. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Help me. Good night, children everywhere. Can you do it Ooh, like a bit si- like, sinister and straight down the lens, please? Behind me and like grab my face like you're taking G- me. Give it a beat on, give it like good night, children <laughs> everywhere. Okay, yeah. Good night, children everywhere. Ah! And scene. scene. Great, wonderful. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Tia. I've had a gorgy time. I've had a gorgina time. Um, everyone, make sure you check out Again and Ongay. Yeah, check out Again and Ongay. Check out my accounts. Where, what are they? <laughs> Tell everyone. I'm so glad you asked. Um, just search <laughs> James Barr on your Instagram, on your X account, uh, on TikTok, and look out for my, my tour next year. Oh! Oh, she's doing a tour. She's on tour, babe. Where are you going? What are you doing? Well, I haven't announced it yet. So um, currently nowhere, but I will be doing a UK tour. And there's a little Australian moment also Ooh, for my new show, Sorry I Hurt Your Son. So um, you can find out dates at info at jamesbarcomedy.com. Please do. I really want to see that. Oh my God, you haven't seen it yet? No, I haven't. No, su- shut up. I'm oh, a bad I can't friend. Wait. I can't wait for you to come <laughs> well, to I'll see pro- it. I'll probably cry. <laughs> yeah, you might, you might cry. But also laugh. You will also laugh. You will cry and laugh. Russell T. Davis came. No, I know. Oh, How sorry. How insane. Um, end like, of the podcast. As in, what? No, carry on. Doctor, do you have to do another podcast? No, no, Poppy's just like, end the podcast. Oh, Russell right. T. No, fine. Don't Russell, worry. Russell T. Davis no, came. Whatever. No, no, no. No, it's fine. I thought this was a sci-fi no. podcast. I thought you'd be interested in like one of the greatest sci-fi writers of all time, but hey, it doesn't matter. Russell came and loved it. That's what you told me. Yeah, he did. He 
He said he loved it, yeah. And if Russell loves it... Then you'll love it. And if I'll love it, then you'll love it. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>